Hello. Welcome back to the Combo Classroom. Nice to have anybody joining me in the present, future, or in the unlikely possible case, the past, or whatever other uh, temporal zones there may be. Today, we are going to be talking about a few fun things for our last Monday stream of May. I want to say our last stream of May, but occasionally I have an extra topic pop into my mind in an hour or two, so I wouldn't be shocked if there was a stream on Wednesday, the last day of May, so I'm not going to call this the last stream of May. But today we are going to look at some fun shapes, talk about the number 137 and its reciprocal, and a important number in physics that's close to its reciprocal, and maybe talk about some fun wildlife and other stories. Nice to have everybody saying hello in the comments. And what we're going to do to start is I want to explain, well, before I explain the shape that we're going to draw, which I brought out a piece of paper to try and draw, and I guess I'll note a response to one of the comments, which asked, am I talking about this thing called the Einstein tile, which is a nickname for a new shape that was, it's funny, I, I was thinking about what I would call an episode I'd make about this, and is it a shape that mathematicians discovered? Because it's kind of hard to say you discovered a shape. Like, the shape exists for sure already. But in that case, what can you discover in math? Mathematicians came across and a realization about a shape, that it was an important shape, and picked it out of the infinite continuum of possible shapes. The thing about the Einstein tile that's nicknamed there, that I will typically call the aperiodic monotile, because the Einstein in its name is sort of a trick. It's not the, you know, famous Einstein person. It stands, or it's a word root related to one stone, because the monotile part of it is sort of like it being one stone or one little tile. The thing about that shape is that although the way it tiles the plane is very complicated, the shape itself is very simple. And what we're doing here is sort of the opposite. We're doing something with a simple pattern, but pretty hard to draw. <laughs> so the actual pattern behind what I'm drawing will be easier to describe than the making of it. The Einstein tile is sort of flipped. Easier to draw one of them than to explain what it does. Now, I will make an episode about that, though, and I sort of held off at the beginning because when it first came out just a month or two ago that mathematicians had proved something about a new shape, and it seemed even a combo class-like vibe, like it was a hobbyist mathematician who just liked experimenting with shapes, and it wasn't somebody who had, you know, been writing research theses about this type of shape for many years. They had sort of been playing around with these shapes and eventually found this really cool thing about a surprisingly simple shape. And both the shape and the person's, like, quote, technical knowledge of some of the people involved were, you know, simpler than some people would expect. So shows that it does take creativity to make cool mathematical discoveries. And when that news first dropped, I didn't know about it enough the first week that I was assuming by the time I study this enough, it'll have shown up on one of the other math channels I watch. But I haven't really seen that much coverage of it. I was like sort of expecting there'd be like a number file or something that would come out about it. And it takes me a while to plan my whole combo class episodes. It seemed like something beyond the scope of a bonus video. And my main combo class episodes on my combo class channel, I figured by the time I plan an episode about this, there'll probably be like a number file or whatever about it. So no rush. But it hasn't gotten that much YouTube coverage. So now I feel like maybe I should tuck that in into the nearer schedule. Maybe I'll try and fit that into a June episode. And the thing, the reason it's going to take a minute for me to fully, you know, brainstorm how I want to do that episode and film it 
is we're not just going to talk about that shape. We need to look at other shapes in the history leading up to it, including something that could have been its own episode if this news hadn't dropped, which was called Penrose tilings. And it takes two shapes under a Penrose tiling to achieve what this one new shape does. Sort of. The new shape, you need to allow its flipped copy to a degree. So it's also to a degree overstated that we haven't fully hit the end of the aperiodic monotile. We could find one that doesn't require flipping someday. But it is still an upgrade to this old thing called Penrose tiling. That was the previous, in a way, best at what it does. There's also these things called Wang tilings I might have to try and put into the episode that are also achieving a similar goal of this aperiodicness. Now, that'll take a while to explain, which is why it'll get its own episode, and I just wanted to make a short tangent about it now. That's not the shape we're doing today. So, thank you all for joining me, and before I draw the shape, I do want to go and do a few upcoming things, because it's the end of a month, and as, well, not quite. It's near the end of a month. And I'm thinking about my plans for June. And I've been doing these Monday streams every Monday, pretty much. Once in a while, I've moved the date for two months or something. But I don't think in June I'm going to be able to dedicate my scheduled time to know I'm going to set the stream at the same time every week for that. I love that idea of having sort of a weekly show that people could tune into and know the time and perhaps even a few per week at different times, so different time zones could join. But that may have to wait a little while. I have some experiments I want to try with the streams of making them cooler. And while I try and experiment with my streams and my other content, uh, I'm going to set aside making sure I set every Monday to live stream and let the streams be a little more scattered. Now, there's way more people on this channel than my combo class channel, but that is where my best content goes. And that's where the coolest stuff I have planned out for the next couple months is really topics that I know are going to get a whole episode there. And almost the scraps and prequels and sequels here. And so make sure everyone who's joined is tuned in there where the latest episode was a cool one about the golden ratio. And that is where I'm going to use this shape in the episode dropping I'll say by Wednesday, but it might come out tomorrow. So it'll come out sometime by Wednesday night. Sometime before the end of May, I guess that is. So before the end of May uh, on that channel, we'll have this shape featured in an episode if I draw it good enough. The thing is, there's pictures of the shape I want to draw online. Even better pictures than what I can draw. But I like homemade stuff. Now, if anyone watching this either now or within a day of me doing this, wants to make a computer visual of a slight upgrade to this, uh, feel free to send it to me. I'll put your name next to whatever visual I use. I like crediting people. So if anyone wants to try animating what I'm going to describe, I might put a little picture of what you did in the episode two and you know your name or whatever. But I like homemade stuff from me or my friends or the combo community. And so I figured let's try and draw this weird shape that I was gonna just have to pull like a picture from some random source, hope it's Creative Commons and cite it or whatever. And someone says, why does the streams always peak at 20 or 30 people? It deserves more. It's true, it's weird. The stream algorithm doesn't like promoting it that much. They love promoting the shorts on this channel. It is crazy. I did, the last short I put on this channel, I filmed like out of the last four or three to five shorts I've filmed, most of them went on the combo class channel because they were doing so shockingly well here. I was like, okay, grade negative two, we're going to be sharing some with the combo class channel. And I even put, I think, the better ones on that channel. They just got like a couple thousand views because the shorts algorithm didn't know that channel yet. And it's sort of different than the main algorithm on this channel. I put what I thought was the simplest and most random of those shorts about multiplying by 11, like only how to multiply a two digit number by 11. But between the digestibility of that fact and the 
Shorts algorithm really liking this channel, that's about to be at a million views and it's just ridiculous. It's like, why? I, I mean, I, I, it's a good video. I like the videos I make, but I've made much more detailed, uh, interesting videos than that. And this just like flew up to a million views. So make sure that you've all seen the shorts on the combo class channel too. After you are done with this stream, hopefully when the stream's done, but if you leave early too, then check out, I've linked in the description here, the shorts that I've put on that channel so far. And those are some extra fun facts. Now, that they don't like promoting the streams as much as they like promoting those. It's okay because although I love the streams and not only do I love them like they're fun and they build a community and I like having more content I've put out in the world, it's um, sort of like the side thing. My main thing is making horizontal videos. Those are my favorite type to make. And on the side, I really like making shorts and live streams. And funny enough, the shorts do even better than the horizontal ones. And the live streams do even worse than the horizontal ones. But I just make the content that I think, A, I enjoy making, and B, would be good for me to put out to the world. So we're probably going to keep it up regardless of how the algorithm treats us. Overall, I am more than happy with how YouTube has treated me. If they don't want to promote the live streams and they still promote the other stuff as much as they are, that's okay. This channel is... Uh, my last stream was about how it was nine months since I created this channel, but I hadn't posted any videos right when I created it. So nine months ago from today, there was still no videos on this channel. No subscribers, no videos. So I'm okay with how YouTube's treating it. Doing good so far. But yeah, they could send a few more people to the streams. Now, I do also post them as videos after. So after the fact, they end up getting, you know, a decent amount of views. Maybe not as much as a video would, but they, they make their way to a lot of combo lords. Somebody also asked if it gave me money. So on a stream, once in a while, someone awesome donates or joins the Patreon because of the stream. So those are always ways that once in a while, I convince somebody that uh, I'm worth supporting and they go to the Patreon or something, but, or they donate through the, one of the YouTube methods. And I haven't done the thing called memberships on here cause I didn't want to, I don't have anything to offer for it yet. I could try and merge it with the Patreon and offer that stuff to both people, maybe in the future, but there is the like, thanks thing or whatever. But I don't, if those don't happen off a of stream, I make like, a few dollars off it. Uh, I do make money from YouTube. So, um, I spend it all on combo class. I don't make enough to like move out of my parents' house or anything, but yet, but I am making slightly more. And that does lead me into the next topic that now I'm able to hire people for slightly more days a week is the main thing. It takes money for it takes a little money for props but the main thing is hiring people and that helps me make more better content throughout the week and I might be able to start hiring my main camera guy Carlo to stay for some live streams and run the tech on them and that was something I was thinking I'll experiment with in the next month or two it's more of an investment you know to build the community because like I said the streams don't gain me subscribers really or whatever but i might you know invest a little bit to you know hire him for a few hours after we film to hang around and run the tech on the live streams and maybe he'll make a cameo once in a while and that will maybe upgrade these as well thank you all to everyone who's so nice in the comments now Let's start talking about this shape thingy that I was discussing that we're going to draw. And the reason we do have more topics, like I mentioned this thing about 137. I will want to rant about that, but I figure it's going to take me a long time to draw this. So let's explain it so I can start drawing while I keep chatting. Now, basically the next episode that 
I am editing together right now, fully filmed apart from, I might film another cutscene with this picture if I get a good picture, is about a topic called graph theory. I don't even mention that it's called graph theory until later in the episode. Like most of the episode goes by before I use those words. I might put them on the screen in a title card earlier, but I like my episodes to kind of have a little arc where they lead you to get an intuition for the topic. And it's an unsolved question and the solved parts leading up to it that uh, is really simple when you think about it a few different ways. So I'm going to try and give you a few instinctive, intuitive ways of viewing it. And then, you know, at some point in the episode, we'll see like, okay, here's the technical definition under graph theory. I'm not going to spoil the unsolved question in this stream. I want to maintain that arc the episode will have. But I will say that what we're doing, uh, and in fact, since a little bit of the description of what we're doing, what the goal of what we're doing is, I'll put that right at the end of the stream because that's like half a spoiler. Uh, but I'm not going to spoil the main question. For now, without having any spoilers, I'll note that the type of graphs that we're going to be looking at, and it, it's not, remember, it's not going to be called graphs right away. It's analogies and visuals and different ways of thinking about it. But at the heart of it, we could describe what's going on there, as we'll see in it, with what's called graphs. And they're not XY coordinate plane graphs. It's in this thing called graph theory, Let's get a visual. This is the one we've already seen. So in a stream not long ago, this is the fixed version, by the way. So last time I dr tried to draw all the red blue colorations of four fully connected dots. What we could call this, you know, is we got undirected graphs, they don't have a direction these lines are going, with one connection between every pair of four dots. And in this case, there's two ways I could try and visualize this. I could say, pretend red's not there, and then these are going to be all the ways, once we reduce some symmetries, that we could have connected four dots. Or if the reds are there, we could say every dot has to be connected. It has to be called a complete graph where they're all connected, but we get two colors. I do want you to think of red as more invisible because it's sort of like on and off, but it's going to be easier in the episode to view it as they're all connected and we draw the offs. So it's called a complete graph when they're all connected. We could call this a bicolor undirected complete graph because it's two colors. But what we're going to try and do today, I think I'm just aiming to draw the blue parts, which I'm not even going to use blue. It's black I'm using. It's a pen. But we're going to draw the on connections between a certain set of dots. Now, this is the fixed version of when I tried to do it before because I was like, it would be more fun to try and just draw them ourselves instead of looking them up. And then when we looked them up, I was like, there's 11. That looks about right. But I actually had 13 on there. I wasn't looking that closely. I still had a duplicate. Some of them are duplicates in disguise. Like, if I try and draw one that um, the duplicate was, if it's like red is connecting these squares and blue is connecting these, or the flip of that, where blue is connecting these and red's connecting these, that looked unique to me. But really, if I allow myself to move the dots wherever and just care about the web of connectivity, that's the same as... Okay, no, I left one that looked like that. I redrew it like that in this case. But it's, there was a copy of that that looked like this. It was a trick. So this one I thought was a different graph until I looked closely. And I'm like, 
Okay, if I allow myself to actually think about how they're connected, each of these have two separate one one things these just look crossed but that doesn't matter that they're crossed it's that's connected to that that's connected to that they have like two separate ones connected and then in the other color they have four that are connected in sort of a square so you gotta unwind them in your mind a bit to try and reduce some copies and still you get a lot because this the 11 fixed version that we have for um, four dots. But here's the thing. Let's look at how many ways we could do this for higher amounts of dots. Let's pull up the OEIS. Now, what this is called here is something like, I'm going to search this, number of, all right, let's, let's give you a view of this. Oh man, it's froze. I hate when it does this thing. This thing, it like freezes on the old copy of it. So I need to reload it. It like, it doesn't like the version I set up before the stream of the computer capture. I don't know why. That's what, okay. Carlo will figure that out once I uh, hire him on a stream. So we're gonna have to look glitchy for a sec. Here we are. Now, what I was trying to look up here is number of undirected graphs on N nodes. I think it's called something like that. Perfect, simple, no, no, no. okay. So I know the sequence. Let's go, what sequence has 11, then 34, then 156, somewhere in it. There we go. Number of graphs on N unlabeled nodes. They just assumed they were undirected. Now, here we can see, <laughs> this is the 11 that I drew right there for four. So can you see that it says four right there next to it? Four. Now, for five, I would have had to draw 34 of them. For six, I'm going to have to draw 156 of them. Oh boy, we're getting pretty big pretty quick. Uh-oh, it's not just the numbers that are increasing quicker. It's the amount of digits that's increasing quicker. So, okay. If I tried to do that for 17, which is notable for a moment, I would have this many options. That is what we're about to do. We're about to not draw all of them. No, 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 no. We're about to draw one of them. We're about to draw one of the, these options. It's an important one. Now, as you can imagine, I could have flipped the colors on these. A lot of them were paired up with each other of color flipped versions. One of them was its own flip, but known as the dual graph. But what we're going to do here is draw one of them. I could have drawn the dual, basically. So this or the dual will work. There's a tiny green bug on here. Don't know if you can see that. Now, oh, no, you can't. It's, you don't even see me at all. Okay. There's a tiny green bug on here. Can you see it? I don't think you can see it. So there's these little green, oh, there's one on the back too. I wanna just like blow them off, they're chill. I don't wanna hurt them. All right, there we go. Now, we're gonna draw the easier of the two between it and its dual probably. And it is a 17 dot one. So one of our first things we gotta do is draw 17 dots. Like I said, I don't think I'm going to draw the ons and offs and connect them all. I think I'm just going to draw the ons. And so we're going to just be connecting some of them. And then in the episode, in a cutscene or title card, if I show this, I'm going to mention, you know, the ons here are like the blues there. And the unconnected things here would have a red. So 
the first challenge is I gotta draw 17 evenly spaced dots on this circle to make it easiest. They don't have to be on a circle. It's a, in the graph theory, I could drag the dot wherever I want. It's just about how it's connected. But it's gonna be a lot easier to draw if they're on a circle in this case. So I need to draw like one big dot on one end of it, but then I need to somehow draw 17 equally spaced ones from here. How am I gonna do that? So here's what I thought in my head. 17 is close to 16, which is a power of two. Power of two is help us cut things in half. That means 17 will be close to half of a half of a half of a half of the way there. And so it'll be slightly less because we're looking for 1 17th as our first increment. And our first increment should then be uh, just under half of a half of a half of a half, which would be like something around like halfway, halfway, halfway. So wait, that's, an, wait, wait, so let's see, what was that so far? That was, I think, actually that was enough. So we got to go halfway, halfway. Okay, I think that, let's see, uh, I'll do it again to make sure. Now we have two dots if I put it there. If I put another there, we have four dots. If I put another there and evenly space them, we have eight dots. If I put another there and evenly space them, we got 16 dots. So if I put another about there and evenly space them, hopefully we'll have about 17 dots. So that's not the maximal way to do it. I probably should have started here and gone across, but let's just hope that I can get this close enough because they don't have to be exactly that much. I'm gonna want after five of them after between four and five of them should be looking like the one quarter of the way mark. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, so yeah, this wasn't, they need to be a little further. Those are a little close. Those were a little closer than we wanted, but it's okay. Six, seven, wait, so. I know there's one there too. So I'll count them all. We got eight. Nine. Ten. This is a little unbalanced. They're going to have to get bigger. Eleven. Twelve. Or further. Thirteen. Uh oh. We, we didn't space them out enough. Fourteen. Fifteen. Oh no, that's supposed to be, oh no, we got 17 because I counted that. 16, oh no, this is way too far. Okay, well, uh, okay, I'm gonna, I'll grab another piece of paper. Um, or no, we'll try and do it on the back. No, no, we got dots showing through. So, see, this was the harder part. Connecting them in the right way, I can use a straight edge. But drawing them around this way, I should have started at almost halfway so that's what I should do instead. I should have gone almost halfway and then that would be about from there to there should cover about eight of the dots. And then, cause we want it between the eighth and ninth. So we need to space them basically a little more than that. So, I think I'll grab another piece of paper. This will just take me one sec, and then we will draw a slightly more accurate version.
All right, so I got a lot more paper. I also had to get a pencil and a bowl because how do you think I drew such a perfect circle? Now, these are the long versions. I cut this more to a square. We'll put it more on the sides and then we will be able to cut it later if we want. So we got to start with our circle. And I should just use one at a time just in case it like bleeds through or puts a dent through or anything. I will check the comments in a bit. Leave whatever questions or thoughts you have while we draw this. We are going to chat, but I first want to get my 17 dots. All right, this is kind of sloppy circle, but whatever. Oh no, this is one of those evil erasers. You know those evil erasers that just like leave a lot of red stuff and don't erase it? Oh no. I'll get a good eraser later if I need, but you know those evil erasers? Some pencils come with those. It's fake. It's not even an eraser. It's a red shreddable thing. So, let's try and draw dots. I'm just, you know, instead of using some crazy method, it's the same size of circle. I'm just gonna make them slightly more spaced than that because I think that'll work because that almost worked. I think we're on a good track because I said between four and five ticks forward, we want to be a little like between the quarter mark. So I'll, I'll make them a little more space going forward, but this could work. Five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Wait, wait, did I count the first or not? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So counting the first, it's fifteen so far. So I get two more, perfect. We did it, 16, 17. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not where they are, but to draw it right, there's gonna be a lot of lines. I kind of need them to have room from each other. So this is good, we got our right room. Now I am gonna look at the comments real quick and then I will start drawing again. So, Somebody said, no, they love the homemade style. If you mean the homemade style of the live streams, uh, if you mean you like when I sometimes like have technological glitches and can't make it work, I'm sorry, I can't maintain that. So I, you know, don't worry that it, it, having um, more people around to help me film my content won't change my homemade nature. It'll just make it a lot easier on me. It's really like, it feels like a crazy job sometimes to run the tech on a live stream, discuss my thing on the live stream, make sure the camera is showing cool stuff on the live stream, react with the chat on, it's a lot at once. So it'll be a lot easier if somebody else was um, doing the things like figuring out when it's supposed to be my face or the other stuff in the background. That's how all my videos are usually too. Most of my videos are filmed by Carlo or another friend. So, um, let's see what country am I in? I am in the U S a or whatever you call it. United States. I am in California and we got cool birds here as well. Yep, I mean, actually the Bay Area of the California. Somebody said they bet there's a factorial in there somewhere. I'm not sure on the exact formula of this. The formula behind our main topic of the episode is surely unknown, because even the fifth term is unknown. Uh, the main topic we're talking about is not, the fifth term doesn't mean, in fact, you know, to give a clue, this relates to the fourth term 
of a mysterious but kind of simple sequence that the fifth term is still unknown. Now, to give another clue, if I was able to draw and check on a computer every single one of these ones that said 40, if I was able to check that many colorations for a certain trait, then my computer could prove what the fifth one is. Well, not quite. We have to check all the ones between 43 and 48. And there would be ways of simplifying it. But, you know, if I just give it to a computer, we'd have to check that batch. All of these sets. Now, I don't think a computer can do that. Now, it's unknown if there will ever be a computer that can do that size of number. Of that, checking that many colorations of things. And for all these, it would be that many colorations of 48 dots, that many colorations of 47 dots, and so on. Now, because of that, if this question is solved, it will probably involve a lot of help from a human and not just a computer doing all that. But the numbers in the sequence could be calculated by like checking all of some absurd thing. Now, it, it, there is some explaining I'll have to do th which you'll see in the episode that drops about this soon, where I'll note, you know, the link between why this is the fourth term and I'm drawing 17 dots, but we'll see. At the very end of the, this stream, when I give the half spoiler to one of the concepts in the episode, then we will, you know, I'll, there'll be something about four. So it's not showing the screen not seeing it. Uh-oh. You're not seeing me? Hello. What when I mean? give the half spoiler to one of the concepts in the episode, then we um, will... You know, there'll be something Hopefully about you're four. seeing the screen. If you're not seeing so, the screen still, let me know. It's not showing oh, the no, screen. Oh, you mean you're not seeing, not seeing the it. other uh -oh. background screen behind me. You're right. You're not seeing me? It's only showing. See, this is why the upgrades Hello. will not decrease when I give the half the spoiler to one Nobody of the concepts Nobody can bring the chaotic the episode, nature out of me, folks. Don't worry. We will. Um, even if, you know, someday I'll probably, you know, be hopefully about you're four. seeing the screen. Try other you're not shows seeing the screen other still, and, let me know. You know it's I'll not put on a screen. Oh, you mean you're not seeing it. I'm not going to sell other background screen behind me. You're right. You're not going to stop bringing the box. See, this is why the upgrades will not decrease the screen. Now, Nobody can bring what the I was talking about. about. Out of me, folks. What so I was trying worry. to show you um, Even if, you know, someday I'll probably you know, man, 48. Hopefully you're probably seeing the screen. Try other not shows so, other people, so, still, and, let me know. You know it's I'll not put showing on the screen. screen. Oh, you mean you're not seeing the back of the screen behind me. You're not going to have to jump over yourself. See, this is why the upgrades will not decrease the screen. Nobody can bring the chaos out of me, folks. I was trying to show you this. Even if, you know, someday I'll probably. Sorry, folks. I know. See, this is, this is, okay. Good thing I had an example of my technological glitches. So I can prove it's for somebody who is an old fashioned person who wants to be like saying interesting things the whole stream. It's very hard to simultaneously be running this other stuff. That's why I was thinking that uh, hopefully I'll have the budget going forward to someone, sometimes hire a friend like Carlo, who films a lot of my videos, to do that part of it here. Now, sorry, the worst thing when that happened was one time that happened, and there was an ad. And I actually deleted that stream because I didn't want to have an ad in my video. It was like near the beginning of the stream. So I deleted it and restarted it. 
I didn't want an ad in my video that I didn't even get paid for. I have literally, okay. I can't, I don't want know if it's like bad etiquette to uh, how you talk about like, um, which sponsors reach out to you or what you do with them. Like if I'm supposed to keep any of that secret, but I will say an ad has played on a stream accidentally before for a company that offered me a sponsorship on the other convo class channel that I turned down. So I said, I don't want to give you an ad. I, I'm not interested in doing the ad for money. Not because of the company. I actually really like that company. But uh, because it wasn't that much money they were offering. And it was the main combo class channel that I am less likely to want to put an ad in. Then, and then the ad plays for accident on my channel without me getting paid. And then I'm like, what if I get copyright struck for this? Because YouTube's really uh technical about if you use other people's audio i'm like oh my god am i gonna get punished for having somebody else advertise on my stream by my mistake so it, yeah i gotta when i open it i gotta cut the audio off is it back no 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 no, no. okay i hope it's fully gone okay let's make sure it's 100 percent gone okay i'm pretty sure that audio is on zero <laughs> Okay, folks, yeah, we're going to get some mishaps in the combo classroom once in a while, but I'm glad you're all along for the ride and have a good sense of humor. You know, life will throw some curveballs your way. You got to be ready to laugh. So we're also going to need a straight edge because we're going to want to connect these as straight as possible. Once again, it's graph theory. It does not matter if I draw the line straight. It matters which dots have a line between them. But if I draw them straight, it's going to be a lot. I'm looking for a straight edge around here. But if I draw them straight, it's going to be a lot easier to get them all on clearly. So where's a straight edge? I don't know if I, where's a ruler? Gotta have a ruler somewhere in this classroom. What am I doing? Do I have a ruler here? Do I think this is a straight edge? This is a broken and burnt piece of an old whiteboard. So <laughs> this is uh, the first straight, straightest first thing I found was a burnt and broken piece of an old whiteboard. We still have a little bit of whiteboard right here, so. We need to like, you know, draw, we'll draw a little smiley face on the tiny bit of whiteboard we have left. Or is it a good working pen? Uh, so we got a little whiteboard left. And I think at this point, we don't need to see these numbers. These are not applicable anymore. So little whiteboard left. drew a little smiley face on what we had left of the whiteboard. Now, this is what we're going to use as our straight edge, like it or not. So, here's my first task. Let's connect each dot to the dot that is one away from it. Now, okay, wait, wait, let me double check my notes. I need to make sure this is, uh, before I spend a lot of time drawing this. Also, this is going to get this thing so dirty. Oh my god, this is candle wax on it mud on it okay we'll we'll deal with the dirt later now let me double check right here that this is what we want um we're gonna think of it as connecting dots to how far another dot is from it however we could think of it as numbers in modular arithmetic uh it's very modular we are, if you assign these numbers right now, we are connecting them in mod 17. You could assign them numbers zero through 16 and say, starting from any of them, it's gonna be kind of like rotationally symmetric. We could say we're first attaching the, each number to the number one greater or one less than it in that mod. So zero would go to 16 and one, one would go to zero and two, two would go to one and three and so on. Now, that is correct. What we're gonna want is sort of like powers of two. Now, 
Don't get confused that Powers of Two will crack the question of the fifth one of these necessarily. Could be related, but, you know, math, mathematicians have spent a long time on figuring out the fifth thing of these. What I'm going to do with the fourth one here actually proves that the fourth one of this picture will prove that the fourth one of a rare sequence is and it's not my proof it's very well known you know there's many pictures when i looked it up online i just thought i'd make a homemade one but it's going to prove visually in a way that the number the fourth one of these has to be bigger than something this doesn't actually prove that the fourth one of these is what it is but it it help. It's part of the episode. It's going to be good in the episode and it's going to look cool. What I'm worried about is I have to draw a lot of lines and I'm worried if there's enough space to make them all clear, if I'm going to be able to do it right to make them all clear, because it's only our first step is connecting them all to the ones that are one away from each other. So We can imagine modularly, we're doing plus and minus one to each number right here. Or visually, you know, they're just connected to the ones one away from each other. You could imagine it, this could be a clock if we lived in a zone that had 17 hours per clock. Then it would be like... Right now we're connecting each hour number that is one, oh, my chair, that is one apart. Okay, so this is gonna take a while. So like I said, we're gonna do some of the topics I wanna talk about while I'm doing this. So, Clarification, because I got sidetracked earlier about what's coming June. We will have a lot of cool shorts again, which are going to be coming partially and maybe even mostly on the Combo Class channel. Make sure you're tuned in there. I also will not be sending all the shorts to the notifications or subscriptions feeds because I figure the folks who like them are on the shorts page. So if you make sure to like, like and particularly if you comment and stuff and watch them all, then you'll, you will see the ones that come out if you're on the page and folks who don't like the page won't get bothered. However, for folks who don't go on the shorts page but want to get the extra facts just from me, I link them in videos such as this. So you can also check the streams and stuff, the little update random videos where I will link whatever new ones there are. I didn't link the 11 one here because we already included that in an earlier stream, like an extension to it but I did link the combo class recent ones. Also make sure you've seen the golden ratio episode. The next few episodes will be, like I said, maybe more like 10 days apart. I mentioned in an earlier stream as opposed to every week. I have ideas and willingness to perform for episodes for every week for that channel, but right now I'm editing them all myself, which takes a while. Like, it's, it's going to take me a while to edit down this next one that's coming out tomorrow or Wednesday. I have started, but it still needs a lot of work. And as I, you know, increase my team and stuff, I'll have more time to actually make all of my ideas work. I cannot make all of my ideas work when I'm, like, the one doing every part of the scene. But I can at a slower rate, which is why... In June on the Combo Class channel, although there'll be a bunch of shorts, the episodes might be more like one and a half weeks apart, but they're really cool topics, so they could be kind of long episodes, and they're going to be topics I really like. And who knows, because I always get sidetracked some weeks and say, okay, we're just doing this random topic. But it is about time to do some of the big scale ones I've shelved that are like, you know, 20 or 30 minute episodes that I'm going to spend a while on and will be a cool little project. Now, of course, this channel will get lots of content too, but I'm kind of going to keep continuing just putting out what I have fun with and what I think would be good for the world to see because it's kind of working so far. So we got them to the ones that are one apart. All right. 
Step one complete. Now we need to get them to the ones that are two apart. All right. This is going to be a little trickier. Just to like, now that we have multiple lines at play. I, I need to get them as clear as possible now. This one, there's like one or two that weren't that clear last time of who they were touching. Or like a double line or something. So, I will check the chat again in a minute. Feel free to leave any thoughts or questions. The other thing I was going to talk about is... Uh, I wanted to do a brief mention or shout out to a cool numerical constant that is actually a more physical than mathematical thing, but there is surely some mathematical basis towards some of its coincidences or patterns. And it's a number I don't know enough about to give like a whole long speech about, but I want to sh share one or two facts about. It's a number that is, in a way, a weird inverse of how many subscribers we just passed. We passed, like, we're at a little more than seven, or 137,000. It's just crazy. I can't believe that. It's supposed to be my bonus channel. What? You guys got to make sure you're on the Convo Class channel, too. YouTube is still promoting some of my really old shorts, and they're just getting, like, crazy views. It's so weird. So, um... On this channel, with, sorry, I got sidetracked, but, um, hmm. sorry, something came to my mind. I got to make sure I get the graph right while I'm chatting. Now, the constant I was talking about is a number that's an inverse of sorts of that 137,000 subscribers we have just passed. And by inverse, I mean, there's a funny way we could describe the relationship. We're at what the number on YouTube says is 137K. So K normally is for like killa something. Now, killa something is usually a prefix. It's usually not just like a number. It does, it, it's been taken in society to mean like times a thousand. And it means that as a prefix, but it's sort of irregular how society has just adapted like K or M and stuff like that just mean like that number. It's usually like attached to a unit before it. Like you have a kilogram or something, some particular unit. But now they do attach K and M to mean those things. So what if we attach the other little like prefixes and such that come in measurements and stuff? A small M means one thousandth. Now it's so, it's all wrong. So a bit in the actual measurements, uh, M's and, K and stuff is different. M the word mil, the word root is 1,000 uh, trillion and does not have three sets of zeros. It is, it's all off because we're counting like amounts of thousands and the sh there's a short scale and a long scale. Got all off historically with the M's and stuff. But in any case, a little M sometimes actually scientifically can mean one one thousandth. Although in this case, I guess the big M might mean 1,000, not 1 million. But, so maybe we'd put a little K. I don't, uh, that can be used for other stuff. But the inverse of having a symbol that means 1,000 would be a symbol that means 1 1,000th in a way. So what is 137 one thousandths? Well, it's very close to a number that's probably existing in all this stuff around us. Like a number all over physics and stuff. Now, it's a thing, a number that's not exactly. Well, let's simplify it. 100, well, no, no, it's, is it quite that? No, it's not quite 137 one thousandths. 
That'll get us 0.137. So it's a little different. We got to take the reciprocal. How are we going to do this? It, it'll be 137. Yeah, we got to... Flipping it's a little different. We can't just flip the K. In any case, uh, 137K seems to have some similarities to one 137th. They're not a super direct mathematical inverse, maybe, now that I think about it a little more, but they are reminiscent. Now, 137, let's first see if, you know, I haven't actually taken a peek at this recently. Let's see what Wikipedia has to say about 137 before we look at the flip of it. And so it's prime. It's part of a twin prime. It's a lot of types of prime. Oh, this, this is a fun trait I love. Make sure you've all seen my, at some point, watch my palindromic numbers episode because I mentioned these things called strictly non-palindromic numbers. And they're like numbers that are palindromic. There's no base of the basic bases, as I call them. In no base are they a multi-digit palindromic number. So here they start talking about this one, 137th, and they're like, in physics. Now, what, this is interesting. They say... Where, I mean, it is exactly what I'm talking about because they explain right after, but I just like the lead in that they almost make look like a separate point, even though it's related to that. Physicists have postulated that the number could lie at the heart of a grand unified theory relating theories of electromagnetism, quantum mechanics, and especially gravity. And it's like, whoa. Now, what are they talking about? They're talking about... We're going to go into the history a moment. Here is somebody named Arthur Eddington. And let's find the thing for the Eddington number. Where do they have that? Well, there's a separate Eddington number. That's why I had this bit up. There's a separate thing about cycling where it's like... Okay, the Edd Eddington number for biking or cycling is the... Maximum number E such that you have cycled at least E miles on at least E days. That's actually a good, I kind of like that measurement for like, so it's like, which number have you done this amount of it on this amount of different days? It's pretty interesting, but that's not the main Eddington number. Where do they have that? They got to have a link to that somewhere. There was an article about it. Let's just get the article about it. So, the Eddington number is the number of protons in the observable universe. Now, originally, look what this guy said. During a course of lectures that he delivered, he said... Here, I made it a little bigger, sorry. During a course of lectures, he said... I believe there are this many protons in the universe and the same number of electrons. That is so specific. I, you gotta love the attention to detail and the specificness in how many protons he thought there were in the universe. Now, what they're looking at here is a value of what's called the fine structure constant related to this. He thinks these are related, and, you know, certainly the fine structure constant is related to all this stuff. It is a dimensionless constant related to a lot of stuff in physics. And it's about 1 over 137.0 something. But I like the history here as well, where it shows. Where is this? So, in 1929, Eddington conjectured that the fine structure constant was 1 136th. He wasn't too far off that this weird universal constant, which... 
I'll be honest, I do not know enough about it to give a pure and I know it's factual to the core yet detailed explanation of what the fine structure constant tells us. I'm, I'll research that more. Maybe someday I'll know enough about it to make an episode. But right now, you know, I know a lot more about math than physics. I don't know exactly what the fine structure constant's telling us. It's this complicated relationship of a lot of different quantities. The elementary charge, the Planck constant, the reduced, or the reduced, you could do one of those. The speed of light, the electric constant. Now, it looks like they are pretty sure it's really close to that because it says a relative uncertainty of 1.5 times 10 to the negative 10th power. That means that they know, or they don't know, but relatively, they're pretty sure that about that many uh, digits are right. So, now... Even more. This is like 10 digits. So they know like about this much is right. So, oh, no, no, no. They're de describing the, this in terms of here. We would have to look at it, I guess. So it would be, we know it's about up to there, however far that translates there. I know it's about 10 digits in there. So what I did see here that's kind of interesting, he thought it was 1 136th exactly, then he did more experiments and then decided it was exactly 1 137th. Humans want stuff to be whole numbers. It's hard not to. It's not exactly that. You know, it's that slightly different number, the reciprocal of that. But it, it's interesting that he was like, okay, it's this whole number. It's not, okay, it's got to be this whole number. It's relatable, you know, humans want it to be a whole number, but something else. So I should be explaining. I needed to show that on the computer, but while I do much more chatting, I really should uh, be showing this stuff. Oh, squirrel. squirrel. Oh, could you see the squirrel? I don't know if you could see it or not. Leave a comment if you saw the squirrel or not. So there's these two little squirrels that are younger looking, like I think they're teenage squirrels or something. And they're very playful and they make some crazy noises. You want to hear this? Let me show you a video of uh, that I took. Re Where's my phone? Uh, my phone might be somewhere else. Where is that? Uh, my phone might. Oh, here it is. So let me play a video of these squirrel noises. It's really weird. So, I, I heard these noises for a while living here before I realized that squirrels are the ones making these noises. Where is this? Da, da, da. Oh, I can't find... Where is that squirrel clip? I'm seeing all these great clips of... My cats are going to be in the next episode. We got a lot of scenes with the cats in them. All three are visible. You got Sage, you got Sassafras, you got Dandelion. All right, yeah, I can't find... I'll, I'll show you later when I find it. The squirrels make this really weird noise. So, but yeah, in the next episode, we got... Uh, some clips in the front yard for a few explanations and dandelion the very fluffy ones there as well as sage the very silky one and sassafras the stray one who looks a lot like sage well he's now adopted he now lives in the house but and he's a love monster they say you can't turn a feral cat into like a nice little house cat they're wrong you can. Sassafras is like such a good, nice boy and loves pets and has never bit me, never scratched me. And he, he sleeps in the bed now sometimes. It was only one year ago that he would barely let us touch him and we found out he didn't have any home and we adopted him. Now... 
Sassafras does have some missing hair that he had a condition, but I think it's fixed. We we had to have a vet see him, and then they prescribed him steroids, and we had to feed him steroids and these little things called pill pockets that are like treats for the cat with a little hollow bit. You put the pill in, and I think it worked. I think his hair is coming back. That does not mean you should take steroids. I'm sure they will make your hair worse. It was like a particular condition. So, uh, after I got these two lines drawn, I'll take another peek at the chat, and then we'll go to our next stage. We're getting actually kind of close to what we need. Like, going forward, it'll sometimes take a little less time, maybe. No, nah, actually it won't. We need to connect everyone in all these states. Each stage will... There's four stages. Kind of coincidental that it's level four and it takes four stages, but maybe. Who knows? Every coincidence could have a pattern. So, I think we got it, our ones and our twos. So, next, <laughs> we're gonna need to go to the fours. And let me take a peek at our chat first. It's rebroadcasting audio again, did they say? Or is it just still doing it? Hopefully that was from back then. Hopefully it's not doing it anymore. So, thank you all. And someone said a 17-sided polygon. That was the first one we did. And, you know, actually, funny enough, a 17-sided polygon will show up in a later episode. Let's cross back. You see that? This These squirrels are brave, these little teenage ones or whatever. They know that I'm not going to hurt them. They're good. You know, they can be my friends. So. The 17 gone. The heptadecagon is actually going to show up in another episode. Apart from this, this is probably unrelated mathematically to what's in the episode. But it's actually important here. I'm pulling up the heptadecagon. It, well, no, actually. Uh, I'll explain this better than their explanation here, but so it's going to show up in an episode related to a variety of ways you can know if a shape is constructible by straight edge or compass. A 17 sided polygon, a regular one is, and not all lower ones are. There are some polygons smaller than that that aren't. A seven sided regular polygon, a heptagon is not constructible by a straight edge and compass, but a 17-sided one is. And you know who proved it? The great mathematician, Gauss. So uh, Gauss, I don't know if he's gotten a shout out in an episode yet. He'll, well, I guess his name has been on some stuff. We've looked at Gaussian integers and such, but you know, Gauss will need a shout out. Oh no, I'm, oh God, I tried to wipe off some dirt with my lab coat and I made it so much worse. It's like a little smudge here. I'm like, let me wipe that off with my lab coat. It's so much worse. Whatever. It's clear enough. Let's move on to the fours. So what we're doing now, we're going four away. We're connecting each to all the ones that are four away from it. So, why are we doing this? We're creating a certain graph that's going to help prove a trait in the later episode, where it's kind of like the red-blue ones I looked at before, but, I mean, I didn't explain why I drew those, but that's also in the episode. But it, this is sort of like the blues. We're imagining connectivity. We could also imagine it as an analogy that we'll use a few times in the episode, which is, let's say there were 17 people at some event or whatever, and at the beginning of the event, certain pairs of them gave each other a high five, and certain pairs didn't, or a handshake or whatever. 
So we're sort of drawing on which pairs of people did high five. A line means like those two have the link. And in the blue red version, we were also including the ones that didn't high five. So like in a different color. Oh no, this pen is like, is this out of ink or something? She's getting weird on some of these grooves. Okay. So, this is stage three of the drawing. We're going to go to stage four, and I'm probably only going to explain, like, what the goal of this is right at the end, because, like I said, it's like a half spoiler, so I'll leave that right at the end and mention when I'm putting the half spoiler part. So, here's the thing, though. I want to make an episode about this idea, too, ever since I read it. I read something that said maybe humans like spoilers. Maybe it makes them enjoy the content more. Like, it's weird. Like, if you know the answer, for some reason, you actually might enjoy the journey more. So, I don't know. I got to research that. Why isn't this pen working? Is it just because it's in, like, a really thick groove or something? Or is it that the pen's out of ink or something? So, let me get these fours and then we will possibly add some more fun topics. But we are on stage three out of four, so we're almost done with this. There's enough room that there's a chance I'll even add in like a second color, the off ones. They don't have to be blue and red, you know, they could be any color can signify it. So what do you think is going to be interesting about this? If I note that the next one I'm going to put is going to be eight apart. Oop. Now, here's the thing. 17 is one more than a power of two, and we're kind of connecting the powers of two apart. So you might think, oh, that's like the crucial key to whatever's going on. But it actually can't be because the range that mathematicians know the next answer is, is not one more than a power of two. And 17 isn't actually the answer. Weirdly enough, this disproves like a lower bound, this picture. And the actual answer of the fourth thing this is going for in some mysterious sequence is 18. This is proving that it's a little bigger than 17. 17 doesn't do something special. All right, almost got these all. All right. All right, leave. Uh, now's a good time if you have anything you want me to see in the chat. I'll look for a moment before we go on to the fourth and last stage of what we need to draw. All right, so looking pretty neat so far. Now, thank you all for all of the nice thoughts and some other fun facts about 17. Oh yeah, and 17 is the seventh prime. However, here's an episode I'll make some days about how seven numbers like 17 are not actually very 70. We get so confused about the last digit of a number telling us like what trait it has, but that doesn't necessarily like 
who says the number 17 is 70 in like just in our base system that means that it's seven more than one amount of 10 so the 10 sounds a little arbitrary in that case you know it's like you know 16 is seven more than one amount of nine 15 is seven more than one amount of eight so we'll look at what is like you could wonder for example what is the smallest base that a seven a one seven exists or you could go vice versa and wonder what traits does 17 of a thing have in different bases we would do we'll have more uh, episodes this grade about weird bases some of them aren't going to be about like here's a specific really weird base but some of them that i've planned are more about like the basic bases as i've called them like when you have base two base three base four and so on but cool patterns when you look at them as a whole like we have a given amount of things what patterns emerge when we look at each representation it could have in the basic bases there's been one episode i made about that but i have other thoughts to share so let's now draw our final stage which is oh and man this is just wild i gotta show this just because i randomly see it on this page right here about the heptadecagon so it's a constructible polygon and to construct it involves finding the cosine of 2 pi over 17 in terms of square roots Gauss's book gives this when translated to modern notation because they write square roots and stuff different. This. This is an insane formula to whip up for uh, how to create cosine of 2 pi over 17 and know that that helps you make the regular heptadecagon. So, our last stage is... You might guess it. We connected to one away, two away, four away. Yup, it's eight away. That's the next one. We got to connect them to the ones eight away. Now, eight is just under half of this. So, like, from here, we got to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got to go all the way there. Let's double check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. After you do the first one, if I double check that, the rest are easy because I'm like line up going clockwise one stage from each one. Squirrel. Squirrel. Hi, guys. All right, you know me, if there's ever a squirrel, we're gonna try and capture it. And I've learned that they get spooked by noises sometimes. So if there's, if I ever get really quiet, all of a sudden it might be because there's a cool animal around. I don't want to spook. So let's continue connecting to eight away.
Yeah. It's long paper is getting, and the, the long paper and the long stick that I'm using for a straight edge are getting a little tricky for some angles. So let's see, I went there and now we go here. It's gonna create a cool shape in the middle too. A lot of plants, a lot of stuff. Okay, getting close. What's next? Whoa, look at this bug. Look at this red thing. That was the thing I was wondering what these are. I think they're harmless, but anyone know about bugs? What is that red thing? Those come around once in a while. Those like red things with a little black thing on their back. I don't think they bite. I hope not. I've been like letting them crawl on me. Okay, so, yeah, I'm try I was trying to thicken the part of that line that looked like a glitch, but now it's like super thick. Whatever. So, now, where's next? It gets confusing what we need to connect. This needs to connect to here. I'm going. Now, this will go to eight away. Wait, wait, so now we can one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're gonna connect there, and we also are gonna need to connect on the other side, I guess. Oh, I'm using the, the bumpy edge. All right. Like I said, if anyone wants to draw a computer version of this, uh, I would consider putting that in the episode two because I'm only drawing the ons. But what I would want is a computer version of 17 evenly dot space dots without the circle even. They're just, like, you know, make an invisible circle they're on. And connected in bl light, bl or not light, but thin, actually probably dark, but thin blue lines. Um, have them connected to the ones that are one away, two away, four away, and eight away. Then all the non-connected ones, which is going to be connecting them to the ones that are three away, five away, and seven away. So all the ones that are connected to three away, five away, and I think that's all that's left. Do you need to do nine away too, maybe? Um, it would be three away, five away, seven away, and 11 away. So three away, five away, seven away, and which 11 away is also nine away, I guess. Yeah, something like that. All the ones that aren't red get blue. So if anyone wants to email me that at the thing in my thing in the next day, I'll probably put that in the episode too, and I'll put your name next to it. But, well, to the first person who does that, if multiple people do, or to the one that looks clearest and coolest. But... Uh, this is my main thing, because I don't know if anyone will do that. I didn't plan it in advance. So I figured I'd at least draw a picture of the ons. But it gets hard to track with the fours, which eights I still need to do. So we got eight, eight. Now I'm going around this way. So. So, I'm getting confused on which way to go, but I'll connect all the eights. I'll make sure they're all connected both ways to their eight. They get confusing because the eights are like almost all the way over. So here will be my next one. I might have drawn an extra one that was like secretly one of the later eights. 
Because you go back around the other way and it eights the same as something else. No. So. Wait, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. So yeah, I connected one early, earlier than I needed. From here we have, yeah. So in the eights, each one's gonna end up going to like two almost opposite sides. But I, I'm getting confused on which order I was going to make all the eights work. I'll just make sure that they all work. So spiraling this way, we can then go so this one's eight away, which is one, two, three, four, five. Oh God, there was a hole. I went off the edge of the table and made a little hole. Whatever. Ignore the hole. Now, what's next? It away, it away, it away, it away, it away. Oh, that bug's back. Okay. All right. Is that it? One, two. Yep. And then we go eight away. We go eight away. Okay, and just in case anyone does try and make any of these, uh, either for your own fun or to send, to clarify, what it is is 17 equally spaced dots on an invisible circle, each connected with a blue line, which is the ones I'm drawing, to the ones that are one away on each side, two away, four away, and eight away, and connected with the red line to everything else, which should be the ones that are three away, five away, seven away, and... Um, I think the math would be like 11 away, but that might be the reverse of something too. The ones that aren't blue are red. So we got it. We could tell it was a little uneven because our weird like spirally thing in the middle is not centered, but we got it. So. Why did I draw this weird thing? Well, like I said, the bit to fully explain it would be a little bit of a half spoiler for the episode coming out in a couple days. So I will do that in a minute, but right at the end of the stream. We are close to that, so I'll be wrapping up in a moment. Uh, someone said, check my email for prime flip code, and I will. Sorry if I'm late to get back to people on emails still. I am very happy for people who have sent, reached out to me and sent cool stuff. And I will get back to you. I had a quite busy weekend, but now we are back in another fun combo work week. And I will uh, check all that prime flip type stuff. From For those who don't know, was, I also mentioned something to programmers out there. One of the random ideas I have done mathematically. Here we have gotten our shape, which I suppose I will wrap up in a moment because that was the main quest of the stream. But to anybody who doesn't want a half spoiler of the episode coming out in a few days, then you might want to leave now. But it's not a huge spoiler. 
And if you do leave now, thank you for joining. I love you. And for those who don't care about the half spoiler, what we have is, what weird trait does this have? Well, if I pick any four of these dots, between those four, there will always be some two that do have a line and some two that don't have a line. In other words, there is no four dots I could pick here that all four of them have no lines between any of them or all four of them all have lines between each other. I wouldn't have been able to do that necessarily on all graph amounts. And in fact, if I tried that on an 18 dot graph, to draw an 18 dot graph where in one way of looking at it, every four possible dots as a subset had at least one link and at least one non-link, or in other words, there is no subset that is all links or non-links, we could say that we'd have a lot of trouble with 18, is all I'll say for now. And that relates to 18 playing a crucial role in a series, being the fourth of something special, the fifth of which is unknown. And that is going to be showing up in the next episode. So make sure you're tuned to the Combo Class channel, where that'll be coming out on Wednesday, maybe Tuesday night. And a lot of interesting random other thoughts I cannot answer in today's stream with the chat, but I appreciate you all for joining and commenting and stuff. Love you all so much. Make sure that you also are tuned in to all those weird shorts linked in the description and all the cool places to take the combo journey and discussions further, like the Discord, a lot of good chatting on that Discord, and a subreddit. And for anybody extra helpful, a Patreon, too. So, love you all so much. And I will be back for some more bonus fun on this channel before long. To clarify about next month, I might not be doing the same, like, Monday evening, my evening, every Monday. But I will still be live a few days a week. What I'm going to try and do is, instead of having as fixed of a schedule of, like, this time every week... For the live streams, it makes more sense for me to use the scheduled time toward filming bigger projects and shorts and other stuff. I am going to try and schedule whichever streams I do more in advance. Sometimes if I have a cool topic I want to stream or a fun experiment or whatever, I'll schedule it a few days in advance. So once in a while, if you like check the channel, you might see on top like an upcoming live stream that would be some fun activity that we're going to do in a few days. And love you all. Thanks for joining me. I will catch you in the next stream. Bonus video, short, or whatever. And definitely, regardless of what shows up in the meantime, by Wednesday we'll see a fun episode that I'll use this picture in. In a either picture or a little cutscene, maybe. I might even explain it for a moment. Where we will see a fun open question in math. One of the simpler open questions that is unsolved.